What's up guys, Max here, back to talk about another Mortal Kombat breakdown based off some of the footage we saw the previous week, covering Katana and Reptile. And before we get into the meat of their variations and the gameplay mechanics and the stuff that we're seeing present, stuff that might look overpowered, I wanted to talk about the art and design of things because when it comes down to fighting games, you really, especially for me, need to love the character you're playing and they gotta do really cool looking stuff. So let's talk about some of that concept art that they had shown off for uh, both Katana and Reptile. And Katana in early designs actually kind of resembled a little bit of her original MK9 design. A lot of skin showing, a lot of stuff like that. To be honest, it kind of really looked like some uh, Avatar The Last Airbender sort of design, some like Water Tribe looking stuff. And they were going to go with an evil variation, but they did end up settling on this design, which is what we see in game. And I do think it looks pretty good. One of my bigger issues about the visuals of Katana, and I do think that they have done a severe upgrade in terms of the female character models. She does look a lot better than characters from Injustice and MK9 uh, before that. And here she does look a lot better, but there's like some reason something about her default pose with her just like sticking her butt out. It just looks a little weird, but when you do finally see her start moving in motion, I think she looks fantastic. Easily Katana is probably about an 8 out of 10 in terms of overall just character character looks and how she performs and her animation. So I think they did a very good job. Reptile, on the other hand, not a huge fan of his finalized design. Now they did go over some of the stuff that they were talking about in terms of his uh in terms of how they wanted him to look. Sometimes he looks like a straight freaking alligator. They know people like the the overall human reptile kind of design, the ninja of reptile, but at some points the dude had like a tail and looked extremely reptilian like his neck would turn into like a frog neck in some ways and like as he would spit acid and stuff like that and uh, even more so than almost any other game before his final design and in some variations you see him without the mask is extremely reptilian he looks like this this giant lizard frogman thing and I'm not a huge fan. Uh, I'll say it right now, I've always thought Reptile was a cool character. He's been he's been awesome ever since the fight from the Mortal Kombat movie and Mortal Kombat 2. But I I really do like the original ninja, um, the original ninja version of Reptile, and I know a lot of other people do, but at the same time, they're not leaving us totally hanging uh, like high and dry because there was a finalized design that they had for an alternate costume variation of Reptile that is supposed to be more of his human variation, and we're seeing it right here. It still does have, you know, the extremely reptilian skin. He does have the claw hands and the claw feet, but uh, yeah, I do see exactly what they're going for. There is a very specific art style to MKX, and this version of this human slash more ninja version of Reptile does make sense. Now let's start talking about the variations and what's going on with Katana and Reptile in terms of gameplay. First up on the variations is Royal Storm for Katana. She does have a few more defensive options, the Katanas, and you actually get this reflective spin which you can hold down that will knock back projectiles or multiple projectiles, so that's pretty freaking effective, especially if you want to stay from distance. And she also gets a little bit of additional range for uh, some of the other moves in her property list, like her fan lift and things like that. There's a little bit more range to them, and you can meter burn them from uh, pretty pretty big distances. The other one is Assassin, which is uh, much more focused on offensive stuff. You usually get a defensive one, an offensive one, and one, one right in the middle. She does get additional damage in general. This one, she does get a parry as well. I hope this isn't a dark absorption type thing from uh, MK versus DC, but this is most likely, as we've seen, a very useful tool, which they did show off a couple of times during the matches. She's got a full screen run punish, um, and we looked at this during the gameplay beforehand, and it's kind of what I was assuming it was. And she's also got this thing where she can actually sharpen her fans that grants more damage and does some specific things on hit to certain moves, so... She's kind of like, you know, in some ways, some characters have to manipulate their resources, and this is a resource thing where she's got to sharpen her fans, so that's going to be very interesting. Outside of that, the final one is the Mournful variation, and this one, Mournful, referring to the loss of Jade, because she has Jade's Spear and Glaive, um, pretty much confirming that Yo Dog Jade is gone. She is dead and not going to be an MKX, maybe a DLC character at some point, but I highly doubt it. And um, with her fans in this variation, she actually doesn't have them at all. And she uses the glaive to control different spaces um, than her normal weapons. But she can actually tilt projectiles in different directions. And she does use the staff for extended combos. So, very interesting. This is kind of stuff I was assuming they were going to do for some characters. Where they actually take away abilities of other characters and give them to a variation of one character that kind of 
had similar stuff. So you have the ninja women, you have the ninja dudes, and uh, that does make a lot of sense. Moving on to Reptile. So Reptile didn't have a huge amount of differences between his variations. So uh, let's just quickly talk about it so I can give you guys an understanding of what's going on. The first one is Deceptive, and this is all about the cloak ability. Actually being able to go fully invisible, not like cloaking invisible from like Predator status where you can kind of see an outline of the character. Not like the dude is fully invisible um, if you want to spend a little bit of more meter. The other one is Noxious, and as we can already tell, there wasn't a lot of changes to uh, the Deceptive version. Noxious is about surrounding him with gas, and that gas deals damage over time. That one, it doesn't seem like too effective at first. You'd see the damage that gets reducted, and it's like, oh, that's not so bad, but you can manipulate it to take a lot more damage. So that in, in just observation from the matches looks very good and I imagine they might change this at some point but we did see a KO via the gas that was around him and you don't like move around from the gas you don't like go into hit stun or block stun or anything you just start taking damage out of your life and then you just fall over dead so I think that's kind of a little a little kind of cheesy I'd be kind of pissed off if I lost to that and it wouldn't be surprised if you could not KO via the gas at some point later on and then finally nimble gives reptile a pretty big speed boost and he he can also slow down the opponent with some other things. This is very similar to the Flash and Injustice, where you're most likely going to get a lot of unique combos while he's in this mode, kind of like I'm a fast dude mode, and uh, stuff that would not work normally at all, and they were trying to show off that during some of the matches. Reptile is pretty interesting because he's got a lot of overheads, it looks like, um, within all of his variations of attacks, but a lot of similar stuff to Mortal Kombat 9, and that's about it for the two characters. Um, Overall, I'd probably give Reptile maybe like a 6 or a 7. I'm not too excited about the guy. I can't, I don't know what to say. I'd probably be more interested in playing a character like Katana. She looks genuinely fun. She has a, a dose of range. She has a dose of uh, zoning and rushdown. So I'm kind of happy with that. And she is a genuinely cool looking female character. Um, I think she looks way better than Cassie Cage. I, I feel that in terms of the other female characters that could potentially show up. Because there's a good hint that Milena could be coming back very soon. I really want to see what they do with her, and I have a friend that really would like to see what they do with her. So I'm looking forward to it. There's going to be more stuff coming out very soon in the next character breakdown. We're most likely going to get information about is going to be Goro. So don't go anywhere, guys. MKX is coming out pretty damn soon, just about two months from now. And we're going to get a lot more information because there is a lot more characters that need to be revealed in that short amount of time. As always, guys, thank you a ton for watching. Thank you a ton for hanging out. And I'll be back with more MKX news as soon as possible. My name is Maximilian and I'll see you next time.